Welcome everyone to the March 10th, 2015 Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, tonight uh, we have a full agenda here and also we will be meeting with the Finance Committee uh, at a later part of our meeting. So to get right into it, um, is there any annou announcements that we have? Jeff, do you have any? None. Brian? I have none. Thank you. Okay. Public forum. Anyone here for public forum? Yes, come right forward here, please. State your name for the record and... Okay. Good evening. I'm Tom Brady. Uh, I'm an attorney with Big Wilson and Amherst. This is uh, Patrick Davis. Um, we're here on behalf of the landowner uh, for 0108109 Straits Road. It's Duval Logging. Um, and we are looking to initiate the process with you, the Board of Selectmen, uh, for a zoning map amendment. Um, I, I sent an email. I don't know if it was circulated. I'll give you just a, a little point of reference if I may approach. Thank you. The, I've colored it green, but this is the, the assessor's map, zoning map. <coughs> These are already industrial. The rest of this is rural residential. The request is, um, and this will be in front of the planning board, we hope, with your permission, would be to change these to uh, industrial. We could also, during that planning board process, have the conversation about this parcel. It is under agricultural preservation restrictions, so even if it was zoned industrial, it couldn't change from agricultural land anyway, um, short of an act of the legislature. So that would be part of it, but because we don't own that, we, just, we wanted to, as the landowner, come before you um, according to 40A Section 5. So we're happy to answer questions for you now. Uh, see this, see this. But there would, there would be that public hearing with the plan. <coughs> I believe Excuse April me. 8th. Uh, <coughs> 25th. Uh, March 25th is the next one. I don't think we'd get on that uh, because of the public hearing requirements. So I think in talking with the Secretary of the, the Planning Board, we would be on the April 8th agenda. Um, What's um, the intended use? Uh, assembly of... Uh, Firewood processing equipment um, in, uh, in a totally enclosed uh, building. And I think that'll be part of that planning board presentation. We've got some schematics of the building uh, um, that we present at that time and answer any questions that planning board, public, board of selectmen would have. Okay. Um, our job is to basically take your... Um, request and pass it on within, I believe it's 10 days to the planning board, which uh, I don't know if we have already done that or not. Um, no, we'll do that tonight. I'll, I'll I, I, I've uh, gone over your material. I, I would move that the Board of Selectmen forward the zoning map amendment for parcels 206-109 and 206-108 to the planning board for further review. Motion been made. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion no. carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. We'll see you at the hearing. I want to keep this call for notes. Yeah. Or... Anyone else here for public forum? If not, we'll go right into the minutes. A motion to approve board of select minutes of 10 February 2015. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank Want you. Extension. You went there. One abstention. Oh, one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I abstain. Key on that. Right there. Okay. Okay. DPW director's report. Phil, what have we got going on? Well, besides fighting the winter months. Uh, Yeah, right. uh, the, other, the other day we received a letter from DEP for non-compliance at the wastewater plant with a variety of violations. Uh, so in the uh, short term, I guess to put it, we've stopped the septage intake down there, the processing of septage. I notified the chairman of the Board of Health and we are obtaining a automatic chlorinator system to put out some of the fire. Uh, tomorrow, 
or Thursday. Dave Prickett Consulting will be down there to go all over the last two to three years of data. And then we are going to submit our plan to DEP and see where we stand and what the cost factor is going to be. The reports here attached with uh, well, Mr. Prickett. So to just run. recap what's going on. DEP came in, uh, did, a, did a review, found uh, exceeding limits in three areas. One, E. coli, two, solids, and three, chlorine. Uh, the solids and E. coli are somewhat linked. Uh, that makes sense. Mr. Uh, what's his name? Prickett. Dave Mr. Prickett, Prickett uh, suggested that so the plant is not really geared to handle septage. So shut that down temporarily, at least, and uh, gone forward, as Phil has mentioned, uh, with uh, this piece of equipment regarding the chlorination. And then we owe DEP a response by the 30th of April as to the correction and action taken, correct further actions planned and the schedule for those. So he's already working with uh, Mr. Prickett to, do we, to work we, that out. Do we know what the cause is? Just too much solids. I mean, that was one of the violations. I mean, the violations. Solids is, and E. coli. And E. coli. Uh, okay, but um, is there something that's causing the E. coli ahead of time? As Don't know that. Okay, until right. we run some data down there. Okay. I mean, they came That's in. I mean, they they received in all this information from our lab reports, obviously, so. Okay. Uh, all right, we'll just have to wait and keep We'll have to on. wait. Uh, you know, I'll definitely keep the board informed of where we stand and what our findings are. But as of now, we, uh, I think we took two big positive steps right off the get-go to pacify a little bit of DEP's requirements, so. <clears throat> Um, are they looking for a detailed uh, description of what our resolution is going to be? And how yes, it's absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You so said Dave's we're... meeting with you tomorrow, Phil? Yes, yeah. He, he'll and, be down and there so, tomorrow. And that's, that'll put a game plan into place? Thursday. Or just he'll be kinda... here Thursday, yep. Thursday right. he's coming in. He's going to go over some data, you know, and decide. We'll sit down and we'll brainstorm what we're going to file with DEP mm -hmm. and have him start drafting some language up before the April 30th deadline and then finalize it by then. Okay. And then come up with a plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, a permanent plan. Right, but in the meantime, we've stopped acceptance. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, any report on water, water transmission line, anything like that? We're waiting for uh, mass DOT. I mean, there's been some emails flying around. We're waiting for their approval of our of the indirect borings. Uh, I, I saw that. Not, the, yeah. Did you see Mike's note? Yeah, yeah I did see. The, it's not that Mike has not been chasing them. But, no. uh, um, just wondered if we had any no updates. No. Um, well, that was as of two days for, ago. He's still. Yeah. He's going to put it out for bid again. Yep. It's going to be rebid. Correct. Okay. But but different he approach on. Right, but he needs Mass DOT to confirm the that that's that's accepted. Yeah. Right, I mean he has it verbally, but we wanted it. We don't want it in writing before we got okay. to rebuild. Well, we put the bid out to indirectional bore to directional bore it, and all right, see what their restrictions will be. Which who knows? They caused us a lot of aggravation they on sure this did. one. <laughs> they sure did. <laughs> <That's not going. laughs> Because now you have to, you know, you have to directional bore under 91, but you still have to jack under the railroad tracks. Right. So, you know, we're trying to find a company or at least try to entertain some companies that do both so they don't have to. Yeah. Okay, that's you know. good. Okay. Um, anything else? Update on any of the roads? Uh, frost heaves? Uh, frost heaves potholes. everywhere. I mean, the elementary schools, unbelievable how much it heaved. You know, Smith Academy. But, you know, I mean, there's frosties right out here in front, so we'll just have to wait till it settles and see what happens. Yeah. More than likely, it'll go back down. Um, this has yeah, been more one than terrible likely, year. But now all the blacktop is, you know, cracked, so the integrity's gone oh, to yeah. hold the water. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that the state comes through with some extra money for crack sealing. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. Uh, if it doesn't, then we should 
we should plan on doing the crash yeah. ceiling, even if we have to hold up on some of the streets, because yeah. uh, otherwise you're going to lose it. Yeah, that's the plan. I mean, there's some, you know, the new roads. I know Maple Street cracked, you yeah. know, so. Okay, anything else? That's about it. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll take up uh, church property. John? Hey, hi, uh, John Wilkes, North Hat, 277 West Street, North Hatfield. Um, a group of us had gotten together, you know, in late December and thought about, uh, uh, you know, the Council on Aging, some of the, some of the th operations they were running. And one of the suggestions made by the group members was maybe consider buying the, uh, ch the town, buying the uh, former Holy Trinity Church. It's, it's still up for sale. We found that out. Uh, and uh, what we like to do is, and I sent a you know, cover letter with a petition, which was certified for inclusion in a warrant uh, this year. So we want to put a proposal on the table for the town to consider. I know you, you, know, you guys are busy tonight. I know you're having a Council on Aging meeting later with the Finance Committee. I'd like to sit in on that to discuss the financial you know, proposals on that, what implications uh, it might have. But what we're looking for is we're, we feel that the, the town is starting to fall short in delivery of services to the elderly. We have an expanding population of the elderly. Right now, according to the, in, according to figures taken right out of the Council on Aging's current budget uh, application to the uh, Board of uh, Selectmen and the Finance Committee, you've got 1,016 uh, residents over 60 years old. And what we'd like to see is consideration to expand the services. We feel that the facility downstairs is way outdated. It's not conducive to you know, a lot of uh, programs that are available to the elderly today. So we'd like to see, and hopefully we can generate enough consideration, at least to spur a discussion on, on this matter and experiment, you know, expanding the services. You can't keep warehousing the elderly down in the cellar or the basement of the town hall. I'm sorry, I, you know, that's the feeling of most of the people who signed the petition. They feel that it should be better, a better facility for the, for the town and for its citizens. But, you know, again, I hope this is starting a start of a discussion on this. I know money's tight, but there seems to be money for all these little other projects, you know. Uh, I'm assuming probably tonight that when you go over the school budget, the school budget will probably be you know, just the increase in school budget will probably be more in the total operation of the Council on Aging. So we're, we're asking that consideration and some forethought be given to uh, uh, expanding elderly service in the town of Hatfield. And this, we feel, is a good step in that direction by providing a, a new facility, which is available, it's centrally located. And again, it's not a done deal. It's still subject to negotiation, still subject to... Uh, um, Tom, you know, stressing, stressing town finances to do it. So, you know, it'll, it'll take a meeting of the minds to do it, and hopefully, you know, we could, you know, get this rolling. So that's, you know, and I want to thank you for the courtesy of doing it tonight so we can start. And it's still, you know, midway through the budget budgetary process, so hopefully we can get something going here tonight. So, Okay. We've, you're aware that we put this uh, petition on the warrant, so that's right. I got notification from the town clerk, so it will go on the warrant. But I think before then, there should be a, a, a live discussion. You know, uh, you know, your board members. I know you've been away. Uh, you know, just just to, you know, I'm willing to come down. And, you know, other members are, you know who are concerned about it will to bring. You know, unfortunately, the council on aging meeting was canceled last month, so we didn't have. A, uh, because of weather conditions, so hopefully we can meet with them. But we'll see them tonight, I hope, uh, later on this evening, and then with the finance committee. So we did put a proposal together. It's not, you know, not, not cut in stone. You know, there's a lot of variables in it because, you know, we don't know, you know, uh, many things in regard to the, uh, you know, the Council on Aging, what they really want for programs, what, what, uh, uh, other things we could do with the facility, and so there's a little, lot of variables, but we feel it's, it's a building that, you know, has been sitting idle for, th what, four years now, that could be utilized by the town for, you know, I, it would be, we feel, an ideal center, for, you know, for a small, so I'm saying small, elderly center. We could build a, a $4 million, $5 million 
senior center and down the road like you have up in Deerfield and <coughs> in uh, Northampton, but I don't think the town, town needs it. But this would be s small enough and large enough to deliver the services that the elderly deserve in this town. So. Can I just make a comment? Sure. I, I think it's important for the town to have this conversation, John. So I thank you and, and the members for coming forward. I, I also think it'll be important that some of the comments you just made referring uh, regarding the potential programs and things like that, I think that'll be important to try to have that wrapped up prior to town meeting so that people know exactly it's not just about the building, it's about mm -hmm. the building and this program and that program and, and other things that'll be offered. And I know that's in flux also, but right. you know, just to give people an idea. Right. And it's also dependent on you know what type of funding you're gonna go forward yeah. after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's nice to you know buy a building, but if it's you can't support a building, right. you can't support, you know, the programs in a building or not willing to support you know the programs in a building. You know, again, you know, coming from from the you know, the numbers you know, a third of your population now is over sixty. You know, and there's services that should be delivered in Hatfield that some people are going out of town to deliver, you know, mm -hmm. receive. So, you know, consideration has to be given that, so. Hey, John, do you have, do you have uh, documentation on how much the heat is, how much all the utilities are? That's so available, that? that's available, you know. Because uh, that's going to be needed, because that those will be questions. At right, the time. right, that's, that's available, you know. Uh, uh, we have that, uh, I think Fran has done some uh, back, background work there in that area. Uh, I know Fred has looked at the, uh, the structure of the building. You know, it's a very sound building. It's not, you know, it's not going to fall down. You know, there was, you know, some, some, some rumors going around that there's loaded with mold. Well, there's no more mold in that building than there is in this town hall. So, uh, going forward there, so, uh, you know, put it into that, that rumor right, right now. So, but, you know, we don't want this to be a confrontational thing. I think it's an opportunity. We, we look at it as an opportunity to, to uh, move the elderly into a facility they deserve. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm getting older too, you know, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm reaching that point where I am elderly actually by- Are we uh, all? A Medicare standard, so, but, uh, you know, to participate in some of these programs, you know, there's very limited space downstairs. And also what's gonna be going on, you, you're gonna have a construction project going forward in this next year with, you know, installing an elevator and ramps and everything. And I, I understand that the, you know, the, where the elevator is going to go is going to take up half the kitchen downstairs. And, while, and even while the, while the uh, you know, construction is going on, there's only one door to that kitchen. So I, I don't think anybody running any you know, uh, food program out of that kitchen while the elevator is being put in there. So, so. Up at the church, is the kitchen accessible, handicap accessible, John? Yes. Okay, from, the, from the main yes, floor? Yes, there's down. a back, from the back door there is. Not, not the one immediately to the stairs, but there is a ramp on the far end of the building which can be very easily adapted to, to uh, handicap accessibility. It's very, it's almost completely handicap accessible now. There's, there's things that have to be done and that's why we put together some items in, a, in, a, in this request. You know, it's not going to be a perfect building because it's going to be a con conversion, conversion from a, a different function. It's not a church anymore. People got to realize that it's not a church; it's just a building, mm -hmm. and that building you can adapt any way you wanted, you know. With with a, and I think, and most of the people who support me think it's very easily be adaptable. It's a lot more handicapped than a lot of the other buildings right now. It's more handicapped than this building. It won't be in a year, but uh, you know, the, hopefully, you know, the renovations and handicap accessibility of this building will be taken care of this town meeting. So. I just have one question. You're reconvening at around 6.30 with the Finance Committee? Or is it in here? Around, yes, yes. It's yes. 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 Mm -hmm. I don't know if these other gentlemen want to speak as well. No. Opening up the floor if anybody has any comments or questions. As far as that building, mm -hmm. I was a structural, a structural engineer in that building. And now it lasts for another 100 years. It's a steel frame building. And it won a beautiful architectural prize for that building. I even have the certificate that was in the church in my office. <laughs> but I'm saying as far as structural integrity, that, that's out of your question. Thank you. Fran? 
Okay. Um, then are you requesting a, a meeting for the public, John? Like a public, just a public If necessary, session? if necessary, if, you know, if the, you know, I don't sit as any standing committee, uh, so it would have to be a board of selectmen uh, meeting or finance committee meeting uh, hearings on it. So uh, more than willing to have a public forum on it. Uh, you know, the time is, you know, we got a month, you know, full, well, more than a month now, so. Because other than that, it'd go right into town meeting and discussion be on town meeting floor. Well, you know, if need be, we like to we like to resolve a lot of questions that you know beforehand. But uh, you know, historically, yet I've been involved with a lot of things, uh, public forums. People don't show up at public forums in Hatfield. They rely on you know, television. You know, they they rely on town meeting. Town meeting still the purest form of government in New England. And, uh, they like to get air out there. It, even if you have answer the question in a public forum, you're going to be a, a, answering the same question at town meeting. You know that you've, from your own experience, because people just won't go to the meeting. They'll say they have the right to stand up at town meeting and ask those questions. Right. You didn't happen to bring with you tonight any of the information, like what the uh, what your plan or what the planning would be for the expenses on the building. I, it's in the letter. I, well, it was presented to you guys in the, on the 12th of January. Yeah, that was, that was, so okay. it's all, comp you know, it was, it was, yeah, you had the breakdown. I had a breakdown, you know, and uh, how we did it, so. But again, you know, we're not looking for a confrontation, say, uh, we, we like to see this go, you know, and if you have alternative plans for the, the Council on Aging and the, and the, you know, the elderly center downstairs, we'd like to hear it in this discussion too. You know, uh, we think the time is growing short for an opportunity to buy that because sooner or later, you know, and I'm probably sooner, it's going to be purchased because if the price keeps dropping and dropping, and then you don't know what it's going to go in there. This way we know it's going to be, a, you know, a public facility in which is serving the public elderly in Hatfield. So, again, but the town will have to support it up or down. Sure. You know. Brian? No, I just wanted to point out that in the letter we sent, the packet we sent, all of the cost of the building was involved in that, and also the, the extra money for what we thought might need for the remodeling of it. So, I, The reason I asked that is I just I bring it up tonight at the meeting if somebody had it with them. I don't have it with me. Um, but if you wanted to discuss it at the meeting tonight to let everybody know what it is, that would be a good time to do that if you had that. Um, you know, just to bring it up, just in case we don't have a public hearing, at least it would give some... I can tell you that we, we put it into to the selectmen for $700,000. The price of the building is $599,000, and at this point we have a tentative agreement to, to, to sell it, to buy it for five seventy. Five ninety nine. Correct. Get it for four hundred. We, we have a tentative. We have a tentative agreement for five seventy to purchase the building, and the rest of the money. We put in for remodeling. Again, that's that's uh, subject to negotiation sure. by the town and, and the, the owner of the property, which can be anybody. We found out from Hatfield to Springfield. So uh, discussion, but a discussion. It have to be a frank discussion, you know. And uh, yeah, and if it's unfortunately, John, it would be under executive session, and the people would not correct. Be able to correct. see what goes on. Um, because it would be in the negotiation stage. Right, and you know, and we're throwing out figures that, that are, uh, we're, we're given over the phone for the most part. You know, there's, you know, you know what happens when you go into a serious uh, negotiation for real estate. You take into a lot of factors, you know, any condition found. You have to have an inspection of the building probably before, you know, you enter into full negotiation. But this article is just to, is to stimulate, you know, the, the what I want to say, the, the discussion for the building, you know. It may prove, you know, uh, town can't afford it. I couldn't go in there and, and now as a private citizen and, and negotiate for, you know, town. It has to come from town government. You know, a, a committee has to be put together. But we'd like to see, you know, we would like to see, the petitioners would like to see that committee put together and if feasible, do it. Otherwise, we, we you know, we'd like to hear what the plans for this, you know, 
the Elder Leaks Center going forward is going to be. You know, again, we f we feel that in the basement of the town hall, kind of a slap in the face to the Elder Leaks. It served the purpose for a number of years, but going forward, I don't think, it, you know, it, it'll work. We had some hope that might have saved, you know, the, the building across the street, but that never materialized. So it's going to be torn down. So that that eliminates. But I don't want to have to put up a three or four million dollar, you know, facility to replace it. So. But, uh, oh, we certainly, we certainly can't afford that. Okay. Um, do, now's the time to bring something else up. If you want to bring it up, expenses on the building, what it would cost, anything like that. Uh, well, we if, put a, do you have it in your folder there or not? Yeah, put, I mean, it's up to you if you want to bring it up no, now. No, we, we sent you the letter. I mean, I was surprised but, you didn't get a copy of it. the public, no, I, I'm saying for the public, John. That was for the, hmm? this, the public can pick up the letter. You know, I can... You know, it can read what's in the letter. Can I read the letter? Um, you can if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, our attach a, our dear board members, attach your copies of the pages of a grassroots citizen's petition asking you to consider for inclusion a warrant article for the purchase and renovation of building and property on Main Street, formerly the Holy Trinity Church, for the development and equipping, equipping of a new senior center for elderly citizens of Hatfield. Our petition is the initiation of a process of asking for your support to bring this proposal up for serious consideration and discussion by the town while the building and property is still available for sale. We hope the outcome of this process will result in the town seeking to purchase a well-built facility which has more than 8,000 square feet of very adaptable building space located in the heart of the community. This project presents the town an opportunity to provide more space for improvement to existing elder services, which should also further spur the development of new elderly programs. We feel that securing this property would both enrich and consolidate existing services for the elderly currently <coughs> limited by space constrictions in the present town hall basement location. To secure this building and property, we have presented a reasonable proposal to expend a maximum of 700000 for this endeavor. Uh, see attachment one. We strongly feel that this amount is realistic to obtaining the property at a fair price for redeveloping the structure with minor renovations and minimal additions and to allowing the town to tactfully adapt the space within into a very efficient, economical, and accessible venue for delivery of town elder services. We are seriously concerned with the town's ability to be able to maintain, develop, and provide and sustain expanded and its secured services for the growing elderly population. With this concern in mind, we are proposing the town undertake this aggressive yet frugal capital expansion pro project to obtain a facility for the elderly of Hatfield which should address the service needs of the elderly population of Hatfield going into the future. We are not asking or we are not talking or asking for millions of dollars like many of our neighboring communities have spent to take care of their elderly with extravagant centers or programs. We are only asking for a viable and dignified place where older services can be provided. As the population of Hatfield is growing older, in, according to the 2010 census, 1533 or 48 percent of our 3279 citizens were over 50 and and 600, uh, or 18 percent at the time, were over 65, according to the 2010 census. The over 65 population has now risen to 716, and, or 21 percent, in the latest 2014 census. We are also fully cognizant to the fact that the town will need to provide the funds for this ambitious endeavor. However, we hope that through careful planning, budgeting, and financing, the project could be completed without severe impact to the current funding limitations. The cost of the purchase by the town, uh, which upon voter approval, could be initially uh, structurally absorbed during negotiation and rehabilitation phases, which could take up to a year to complete, and then spread over a 15 to 20 year uh, period within a town's annually bu budgeted process. During 2015, the town's annual budget provides direct support for the elderly through the Council on Aging, which was only 78,954, or less than nine-tenths of one percent 
of the entire $9.165 million budget. The necessity of a prudent operating budget for a new facility will indeed increase the annual operating cost for elder services in Hatfield. However, this would be a minimal increase to the overall fixed cost of the town, which has historically been very limited in directing, uh, financing, directly financing elder operations. We have estimated that it, these added costs and have proposed an operating budget for the next fiscal year, including existing appropriations expanded to meet the needs of the Council and Aging Department and its proposed expanding uh, operations. The budget estimate is meant to be realistic for the fully operational standalone facility and transportation services. Historically, very heavily, heavy reliance uh, for services has been placed and now expected from elder service agencies and grants from both state and federal governments. Because of these other agencies may also be able to provide support for the project we are proposing. We feel that the proposal is a very beneficial effort which will vastly improve the delivery of town services for its growing population at a minimum price. Our hope is for you to affirm our intentions to put the proposal to the town meeting for approval of a purchase which will immensely benefit the elder citizens and all the citizens of Hatfield as a well. whole. And there's an elaborate budget in the petition. I don't know why you didn't have a copy, but here, here we do. This is more for the public, John. Okay. Thank you. Okay, anybody else have any questions or any concerns? Okay. Thank you for coming in and uh, We'll see you a little later tonight. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, warrant articles. Okay, Paul. Uh, um, we're probably not in a position to close on the, the questions remaining because um, most of them are money yeah. uh, articles and we're not real super clear on where we stand financially. Um, but, uh, you know, there's... Uh, two, two to be added. Paul worked this with the... Uh, CPC, the 380,000 more for town hall. And that's also the bridge. And the bridge. Which are yeah. not in here. And then there's, there's a lot of projects. Like on page four. Um, Those are two to add yet. Yeah, there's, there's like incomplete yeah. articles yeah. here. These, these just got to be finalized and, and yeah. brushed up on what we're going to present. Yeah. Um, I did send you an email today. I don't know if everybody saw it, um, but uh, in, in regards to proposed Article 11, uh, the trustees are in the process of uh, preparing a warrant article to, to turn it over to the town. So it looks like you know that's moving. I, uh, I had down to accept the uh, the Smith Academy Park. Smith Academy Park. Yeah. Um, uh, the the treasurer collector. Uh, the back of the park, as I suggested, that that's going to happen. The DPW. Somebody needs to start developing uh, an addendum to their existing budget to take care of the operational expenses, maintenance, and scheduling, and everything else. The enterprise funds um, that we're talking that? about, uh, lumping oh, yeah. them together. We're we're going to. Keep them the way they are. Uh, it's open for discussion. Uh, we're, where's the thoughts on on the enterprise funds? I would highly recommend we and water. combine the water and sewer enterprise funds. Uh, it doesn't solve problems in terms of the financing of our water and sewer infrastructure, but it does provide flexibility in that you end up with one set of retained earnings. You have all the data on the water side, you have all the data on the sewer side, but you end up with, and you're authorized by law, to end up with one set of retained earnings. So for example, we had 
a special town meeting to deal with $35,000. We could have taken care of that had we had one uh, set of retained earnings. The, the second part of all this is, and then it's not the back story, but the primary story, we do not have now anywhere near the amount of money coming in from any sustainable charge that we could make to water and sewer to build up the necessary reserves to maintain and or expand either uh, our existing water and sewer system. And we have large segments of the system that need to be replaced. The fact is, the fact is, we're going to be going to taxation for those large capital projects. I mean, there's the, 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 the amount of retained earnings is just not going to be there for multi-million dollar projects. Right. So this simply provides us a degree of flexibility in dealing with smaller problems. There are some other things that we need to be looking at in order to perhaps boost that set of retained earnings, like our allocation of indirect costs. Perhaps they need to be, we created them, maybe we need to take a look at them. That's $90,000 a year coming out of retained earnings to, or what could have potentially been retained earnings, uh, to go to cover various other salaries uh, and other other things. And there's some things uh, clear, clearly discretionary that we, we could be looking at there. And there are a number of other things in terms of how we're operating uh, that we can look at to potentially save some additional funds. But this is simply to, to take advantage of an existing law that permits us to enter, to combine the two funds and provide us a, a degree of uh, additional flexibility. The concern that I would dealing with smaller problems. The concern that I would have, Jeff, would be that um, the water pretty much could be self-sufficient, pretty much on that. Okay, but the sewer is not. Um, and if you start needing the money for the sewer and taking it from the water, um, then. But the fact is, for either water, like we're doing right now with the water transmission line, mm -hmm. that's through taxation. Sure. Okay. So we're going to be going to taxation for water improvements. And we're going to be going to taxation for capital improvements on the sewer side. So this is, and just, or expansion. This is just for emergency type or yeah, somewhere Yeah, this will just give you one pot of money that either water and or sewer could go to if, for if smaller, smaller projects, essentially, not, not the large projects. They're going to come out of taxation no matter what. Yeah, I mean, uh, just uh, as I said in my email that I sent to you uh, um, a while back, uh, the way the budget is set up now, the, the sewer <coughs> uh, system, the enterprise fund has a structural deficit. It's never yeah. going to generate enough money to cover all those costs. It's too small. It's too small. Um, so. Yeah, I think several things need to happen. Um, I think, you know, uh, combining the funds make, does make some sense to me. We, I think we definitely need to look at uh, how we're allocating indirect costs. It's, that, that's a big chunk of money. Um, so, yeah, there, there's a few things we need to look at. But, yeah, you got a problem here. We got to do something. It's not going to go away. We don't want to have to have a special town meeting every October. Uh, uh, to fill the to fill the hole. Well, we set ourselves up for failure right away. The minute we took indirect costs and all the the expenses and stuff that go yeah. along with it, but that's um, a requirement. That a that's burden. a requirement yeah. of an enterprise fund. Yeah. Yeah. But you, there's some discretion as to yeah. how you allocate those, and that's <clears throat> what we really need to yeah. look at. You yeah. can't eliminate no. those no. indirect costs. But right now, it's you know it's a hundred almost a hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. It comes right off off the top. Anyway, that's the background. Okay. I, I, the only thing I would add to that is I, I just think it's important that, um, which I'm sure is, is what will happen, is there's still separate accounting within that yeah. fund. So you You'll truly have know what the water is, truly know what the sewer is. It's really build, a little more flexibility. Yeah. You're going to build a different rate finances. for water than right. for sewer, and you're going to have... Yep. Have all that right. backup. Well, you'd data. still have right. your tracking. Yeah. yeah. Each, each account would be separated. It's just that the funds could be utilized for Yes, I just wanted to make sure that everyone 
realize that mm -hmm. on TV. Oh, sure. <coughs> okay, what's this on a pole barn? What's, what's, what's this here? These are sort of capital projects. Um, so uh, they're just placeholders at this point. Um, you know, we have... <laughs> That's uh, DPW yard. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> pole barn or just comparing what's stand what's standing well that's just about standing the trusses the main the main beam carrying everything is done it needs to be done before it collapses the roof it's, is shot it's got all holes in the roof I mean I don't know when it, I don't, I don't there, know right? when it was built but that, I'm sure it was, that built was back out of, in the 80s. Yeah, so. yeah. it's time. <laughs> yeah, it is um, a metal roof. Yes, but I mean that the, the main uprights are should be okay. Yeah, the main, the main the, posts are okay. It's just yeah. the, above the main post aren't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it's basically rebuilding. Correct. Yeah. yeah, it's not a new structure. Yeah. Okay, it's rebuilding. Um, although sometimes it's just as simple to get rid of it and then put a brand new one up well that could be okay we'll see. and that should be <coughs> you know we'll have to see out. what we'll have to see what the the main supporting posts are set in i don't, I don't know how they set them i think those are did. just set on concrete you know uh three feet yeah. four feet in the yeah, ground i don't know so uh, those pole barns that's all they did yeah. was pour concrete in and set the pole right on top but of it's them. it's a shaky structure right now and this winter didn't help matters mm. All right, uh, two generators. That's uh, Town Hall and uh, the highway garage. Highway garage. Okay. Um, on the generators, see generators, are we looking for, we're not looking for something like we did next no. door here. We're just looking no. for we had to a generic just to run the, the, the power yep. Yep. And, uh, and, and gas pumps, pumps up the highway exactly. garage yep. and, and lighting, Lights, yep. period. So it can be just a simplified yep. uh, gen generic uh, generator like Yep, natural gas, both places. Yeah. Okay, and same thing here at the town hall. Okay. All right, and then uh, the freezer would be That's for at the, school. the school. Okay. Why, why is that? Should that be? You got it submitted by the Board of Selectmen, but shouldn't that really be the, the school? Yeah, the school committee, yeah. School committee? Yeah. Wasn't it part of the uh, capital plan? Yes. yes. Well, yeah, uh, I don't know. Well, but maybe that's how it ended up on okay, the board well, selection. Either, either Whoever, way. Yeah. Some, yeah. Did we ever did we ever have somebody come in and, and take a look at the structural part of that, Brian? Do you know? I, I don't know. School? I don't know the answer to that. Because and, I, I know um, you know the all the controls and stuff like that would should be all new. Uh, but the freezer box um, you know I think sometimes the older ones are a heck of a lot better than the newer ones. Let's put it that way. I, I know there's been work done on it numerous times, so I don't know if that's the recommendation from the, um, you know, the HVAC people or okay. um, maybe Paul, if you don't mind, maybe you could just check with John and see if, mm. I mean, he must have gotten an estimate from someone to come up with the cost and to bring it okay. to uh, capital planning. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. And then the phones, what's going on with the phones, Paul? That's, that's, that's from, school for school. Again. To, that's, that's school, school as well, yeah. Okay, that's a school. Yeah. Looking so at their phone system, both schools. at uh, elementary and the Smith Academy. Yeah. Okay. And the $20,000 to create an emergency water connection, City of Northampton. That's back and forth there. That's the tie in that hole. That's the only piece that's not done yet. Correct. Up there. Community preservation, yeah. all that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, just waiting uh, for uh, Mr. Wagner um, to submit his articles to me, and there's, there's all, there will only be three. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I've got, it's on the agenda later on, but might as well talk about it now. You know, the, the CPC approved three hundred eighty thousand dollars for to get for phase two town hall renovations. They approved uh, one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars to renovate the Prospect Court Bridge. Um, That'll clean up that area nicely. So, yeah, and the other project that will be on a warrant, uh, and I can't remember what the dollar amount is, but it's the improvements to the cemetery. 
Thirty. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So it's just. It's, just, it's just oh, it's it's a. Uh, I can tell you. It's a, well, I'll, I'll I'll have it for the next meeting. I've got the information. You're restoring uh, some of the stones. Some of the stones, right? Um, I think you're going to be here. Well, this is this is a major project. Major to, project, okay. And you got CPC funding to to do it. Yeah. And of course, we have the Article Twenty Four is the petition uh, to purchase the Holy Trinity Church. Yep. So until we, yeah. You know, free cash has not been um, certified yet. It's usually certified by now, but uh, it's been in, we had some unusual circumstances this year, um, which is delayed things. Uh, but I do have, you know, uh, the HCOG uh, working with Mike, the accountant, he's in Florida, um, to get the Schedule A in. Uh, number one and number two to get the free cash certified. So, um, yeah, we're you know we we need we need to get the Schedule A uh, submitted and the free cash certified. You know, PDQ. You know, we're running out of time. When will that be done? Hopefully by the end of the month. Can't get it done any quicker. That's okay. We'll, we'll if try. we get it done by the end of the month. Yeah. What's that? It's okay if we get it. No, nothing. Well, I did see in here that they were stopping all. If we um, don't get it in oh, by yeah, the end of the month, yeah, not yet. Yeah, if we if we're, I can't remember when the deadline was. If now. we get if we're if we're into April, then we get cut off until we turn it in. Right, until otherwise, we submit it. if we get it in this month, we're okay. Yeah. Okay, that's all the more reason we we get going on on the accountant's position. Yes. Yeah. And get that going. I, I know you got like six applicants. Yeah. And if we got qualified applicants, I think we ought to just. Deal with them. Let, let's let's talk. Take, if we don't mind taking one thing out of a turn, we're going to talk about. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, accountants, are we all agreed? Or this is going to be a full-time position. This should be at least. We need to be able to talk to that when we interview people. They want to know how many hours they're working. Or yeah. Well, that's that's how folks the, are already saying. Well, 19 hours. I don't want to work. Right. Well, but if know, they know it's they, a 32-hour job. The ad. <laughs> I, I, I saw that. It says a full time. Mouth, perhaps. Yeah, it, yeah, I'm sure. It says uh, the ad reads full time benefited position. It should be at least a 35 hour position. I'd say at least, yeah. Okay, 35 okay, so to 40 we're, hours. All right, so, so we're in, looking full time. And the pay position. commensurate with a yeah. full time yeah. full time accountant. Right. Um, well, I think we need to uh, come up with a, the amount of hours, or is that going to be part of the negotiation that we'll, well say that we, we expect someone to be a minimum of however many hours and 40 pay hours. them accordingly? That's what I mean. It'll be four yeah. days a week uh, for right now. Why four Could days five. a week? Um, five. At future. Or so many hours per um, week. I mean, that, that position could work five, and that way they would have a Friday to work without the public interrupting them. Well, okay, or anybody may. interrupting them? Yeah. I, I just, I, I mean, we're absolutely correct. We just need to, as applicants come in, say it's need, it's a 40-hour week or it's a 30-hour yeah. or whatever it's going to be. We just need to wrap that up, right. by, whether that's tonight. I'm, I'm or sure or that it could go to easily <coughs> adaptable to a 40-hour week. Yeah. Yes. Uh, our, we got to start there. We could always back up. Yeah. yeah. Our, our, our auditor you know, I've, I've said to me some time ago in, in a phone conversation, you need somebody in there uh, 32 hours a week Monday through Thursday, uh, at a minimum. In my, my in my opinion, it's probably a forty hour a week position. So it's between thirty two and forty. And um, I wouldn't want to cut it short. No, okay? no. Um, because well, it's going to be a salaried position. So you know, it, and and the, and the you know, like any job like that, the workload's going to vary. Mm -hmm. You know, to a certain extent from week to week. The work gets done. Yeah. It doesn't matter how yeah. long it takes. Right. Bottom line. Okay. Um, the next step is when do we want to hold a meeting? Do we want to have a special meeting on this here to put it together, look at well, uh, or at least get us a copy of the uh, uh, the applications? Well, we and, do. We uh, do have a. He has a. We have a screening committee. We have a screening committee. Right. We have a screening uh, committee. Assembled. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
That's, now, understand, okay. the screening committee makes recommendations. Mm. We can still go back and look at all the uh, Well, yeah, I'd like to see, I would like to see the application uh, so myself, I. Yeah. okay? Yeah. I don't, I think we all, you know, right? I, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. Um, the screening committee, is, is, as long as they weed out the people that, yeah. you know, the person that has no municipal experience, I'll, you know, um, yeah. put them on the side until, you know, until yeah. we decide. Yeah. Yeah, well, with, the, with, with only six applicants, um, I wouldn't want to rule out anybody at this point. Um, uh, but certainly... But you, you don't understand. Well, you do understand. I do understand. Because <laughs> yeah. municipal experience is a whole different line of work than a regular accounting position. Yes. Okay? That, yeah. You have to know all the ins and outs of, and, and of and the, DOR well, and, and all that other stuff. And, and there's only one applicant that I say fits that description. Um, and uh, what is more important, I think, is that they have an accounting background and that they're, you know, and they're motivated to learn the municipal side. Uh, going into this, I never, I never anticipated seeing one application with somebody that already had municipal experience. So we, we're going to have to make the best of the situation. Well, let's take a look at them, and then we'll go from yeah. there. Can you get us a copy of all? Absolutely. Six? Okay. No problem. Uh, I didn't mean to digress in it, but I want to lock down. So we're going to, we're talking about a forty-hour week, and uh, yep. Paul had proposed a, a pay range. Okay. Is there anything else on the uh, on town meeting? I think that's <coughs> that's about as far as we can get tonight. I would say. I, I just have a general question. Sure. So if, for example, um, one of the proposed articles from the planning board, uh, or would they have a couple or different sections, but do any changes to existing um, bylaws, uh, is anything grandfathered or does it change to, from that day forward? Is that the new rule and policy? That's the new ruling. Um, I don't let, know. let me rephrase that. If it's, it's, if they've adopted I guess the scenario that I'd like to use is, let's say, the signs, okay? Mm -hmm. The signs in front of your building, if they were adopted to make them smaller, right. the people that had signs there at the time of the adoption can still have those in their grandfather. Otherwise, the so new it's signs anything on a, be, kind of on a go-forward basis has go to meet whatever basis. changes. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, on some of the stuff, if you do well, a complete, um, um, what you call it, uh, well, we, every renovation 10 years we do a uh, yeah. uh, <coughs> renovation or uh, like a what? A renovation? No, no. no. Uh, when we take a look at, you do all the uh, articles, I mean, all the uh, laws and zoning articles laws over and again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, a complete overhaul, you mean? Well, every, every 10 years you should I mean, go through and redo them, mm -hmm. revisit them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then that would change, and then you have to be careful because it could affect everybody. On you know, uh, that's it. I I, and I I just know that in reading this, I'm just curious as to if, if if those questions will be asked of the planning board or of us. And I just wanted to make sure that I understood the process. If somebody asked, well, does this affect something that's already been happening, or does this only affect something that's going to happen after town meeting? That's it depends on what the article is. There. Oh. It depends on the issues. Okay. Right, but who would who would make that the determination? The planning board. The planning yeah. board. Somebody from the planning board would stand up and give the explanation. Of that. And that's fine, as long as we're just following all the the legal aspects of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, the other <coughs> little Neponset Road came up again. Did Timmy stop in and see you? He did. On and. That? Uh, I know and we I, talked about Little Ponson yeah, Road before he I left. Yeah, he talked uh, about... I, we got something from Coupleman and Page. Yeah. Um, talks about... What time is it? Yeah, we I mean, only got six minutes. Oh. So he's requesting that an article be placed uh, for the annual town meeting to determine the status of Little Neponset Road. I explained to him that we, we can't... <laughs> town meeting... Uh, can, cannot determine the status of Little Deposit Road. Um, its, its current status is unknown. Um, it's probably not a town road. There's absolutely no record of it. Um, 
Well, it's not a town road unless there's some positive right. record that it is. So, and well, the I gave him a copy of, and I, uh, I left them in my office because I wanted to give one to you guys. Uh, it's a memorandum from Koppelman and Page. It lays out uh, the whole process for um, town road acceptance, and it's it's a uh, uh, um, rather intricate process. And you know, in the end result, I explained to to Tim that you know the road will need to be surveyed. We will need to have a meets and bounds description, and then that needs to go before town meeting before it can become a town road. What I'd like to do is just go into discussion at another meeting. Uh, yeah, we don't need to. Because we yeah. don't have enough time yeah, here. Yeah, we don't so. need to spend that anymore. Okay, so uh, we just... should read that couple minute page thing. It's yeah. Okay. There's lots of. Um. I can skip over. Let's see appointments. Well, number four. Yeah, well, we'll do that. Appo uh, appointments. Which one's that? Oh, okay. Uh, For Jerry. Appointments, Clark. resignations. I move to approve appointment of. Mr. Gerald E. Clark is Town of Hatfield Veterans Benefits and Services Officer. Second. A motion be made, seconded. Is there any further discussion? Well, just uh, for folks, uh, he's been a mayor. He is a Massachusetts resident. Uh, he is a veteran, been a member of the American Legion here in Hatfield for 47 years. Also a member of the VFW. He's been on the Veterans Council in Northampton for 10 years. Has extensive experience. He's uh, had discussions with our current Veteran Service Officer uh, uh, Paul and uh, uh, Paul highly recommends him, and I've spoken to him as well, and I, I recommend approval. Okay. Um, any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. You also need to uh, okay, move to uh, yep. uh, okay. renew the appointment of Mr. Scott Pomeroy is our Inspector of Animals. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, move to accept with uh, resi with uh, move to accept the resignation of Ms. Hes Helen Bardwell from the Board of Registrars and to commend her for roughly 45 years of service in that role. That's awesome. Motion made. Seconded. Uh, second. Any further discussion? No, just thank you very much. If Helen. not, um, I'd, well, I'd just like to say the same thing. Uh, we thank you very much, Huddy, for all the work that you've done and uh, for years of service. And uh, good luck to you and and uh, take care. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? If not, all okay. in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Key, what are all these okay. to be voted tonight? No, we can wait for them. <clears throat> okay, town government uh, study. All right, well, that's so we're going we can, to we can put that in the next. All right. Center school. It, oh, we're skipping over that. Okay. Yeah, well, well, yeah, we're going to yeah, skip over. Yeah, well, we need to. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to. Yeah, move things along. Yeah. Yeah, just quickly on center school. Uh, it will appear. The project will appear in the central register tomorrow. Um, so I should have the, the bid documents later on this week. So we're we're ready to roll. Okay. And, uh, and we already talked about the CPC project. So okay. Okay. Um, we probably can discuss the town government study a little bit if you want. Uh, I I didn't put that in. I think. That's all right. Well, we can. It's six thirty, right? Or no? Hmm. Uh, there there was a. I, I didn't put that in, but there was a DOR proposal, uh, uh, well, uh, a flyer saying that they're available to do various studies. And I just reminded folks that uh, in January of 2011, uh, we had the Department of Revenue here did a financial management review. And part of that, the introductory part was, not introductory, but a significant section uh, covered town government and town structure particularly with uh, regard to financial management. Uh, talked about roles and responsibilities, talked, made suggestions about making the town treasurer and town collector appointed positions. Uh, talked about expanding the role of the town administrator in the, in the budget process. Uh, a 
whole, whole talked about uh, so developing a charter for the town. Right. Well, the, the reason that I was brought this forward oh, for all the things you that, for all the things you stated really was just uh, with the turnover and the changes was just to see since they do free uh, analysis uh, if they would make any make any recommendations for the, you know the structure of our government or, or not. Yeah, um, and my thinking is, or, or was, because we couldn't locate that report. Paul, is that right online? Paul, right. It's online? Or, yeah. The half? yeah. Okay. Uh, and the reason I, I had asked and, was and we, we bring things forward as a board, <laughs> and this way we can say to the townspeople, you know, rather than them just thinking yeah. Jeff, Ed, and Brian are bringing this forward, we can, the documentation is, you know, this is a recommendation from the experts. Of, <laughs> Who did a review, and this is their their right. recommendation. Yeah. If and, they have, that's all we so. can do is it yeah, just absolutely. adds reinforcement to what we've said. Right, last year right. So well. people know where it's coming from. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Well, I uh, I remember seeing that report in my old office, and <laughs> it, and, be, and after the move, it it, it disappeared somewhere. It's right. probably still in there somewhere, but I haven't been able to put my hands on it. All right. Well, it. I'll look it up. I I didn't. Come across it online, Go but I, I don't know where where Department to drill down of Revenue, on. Division of Local Services, right. yeah. studies. It. It's Hatfield, 2011. 11. All right, and, and maybe things have changed in five year, four years, given given the, the circumstances of, the of, of the what the <laughs> right. But perhaps yeah. with the the changeover and what's gone on in the town, it might you know. Sure. All right. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, is there any, any other business, Paul, that you need to bring up? No, I'm good. I'm all, I'm all set, You're Ed. Good? Okay. We're going to... All right, this concludes this portion of a Selectman's meeting. Uh, we'll be going into the Finance Committee meeting and the Board of Selectmen meeting uh, discussing the town budget, yearly year-end budget, or our new budget for the new fiscal year. And... Um, We'll take a, a short break and, uh, and then get on with our meeting uh, jointly. Thank you.